Hello, Wrestle fans. It's me, Jordan J. Scavone, welcoming you to the second episode of Squared Circle TV, also known as SCTV, if you're shortening it. You can use that as hashtag SCTV if you're watching now. Talk about it on the Twitter with your friends, family, maybe even me. Maybe I'll be there. You never know. I've been known to be on the Twitter occasionally. I tweet. I can tweet from my phone. I've done it before. You can tweet me, at RealJScavone, using the hashtag SCTV, and I'll respond to you. Maybe I'll talk about something you want to know about on the show. Anywho, this is the International Ring of Grapplers, Squared Circle TV, and that means there's going to be some Squared Circle action. That's right, professional wrestling. And I, um, I would like to welcome you back, if this is your second time being here. Who knows, maybe you've watched the first episode twice, and this is your third time being here. But if this is your first time being here, I would also like to welcome you. I very much appreciate you are here, and I hope that we can become friends. I think we can. I want to be your friend. All that has to happen is you want to become mine. It's a, it's a nice moment we had there. Okay, today we are featuring two matches for you. One from International Ring of Grapplers presents Collision Course. It is the Cash for Gold Battle Royal, which is one of the best matches International League of Grapplers has put on. And we are showing this match to you today to showcase the talent of International League of Grapplers. So check out the Cash for Gold Battle Royal. The winner of this Battle Royal will receive this contract right here. No, six months. That's what it no. says, right here. I can read. I can read. It says six months on it. I read that contract myself. I did, twice. I can confirm it does say six months. Or they will be back if not delighted. Now, this battle royal is going to feature a plethora, but that means a lot, just in case. Oh, my God. 
Uh, we lost a down to five. Kid Diamond shooting Star Press out of the ring. Speaking of Kid Diamond, he's in our next match. But also in that next match is former Cyber Star Champion, Beautiful Mike Budnick. Now, Beautiful Mike Budnick is an interesting individual. Very cocky, very brash, very loves to let people see what he looks like. He often finds himself stuck in front of a mirror which is the reason that Chaz Brax, his manager, carries a mirror. I think he uses it to lure him to the ring to make sure he gets there on time. But this match is, a, is from Cinco de Mayhem, our most recent show, and features Kid Diamond versus beautiful Mike Budnick. And now, for something we've never done on the show, it is time for a wrestler spotlight featuring beautiful Mike Budnick. Beautiful Mike Budnick. Weighing it at 160 pounds and coming from Cadillac, Michigan, Mike Budnick debuted February 11th, 2012 and is the inaugural holder of the Cyber Star Championship. His finishing move, the Extreme Makeover, is a running double knee to the face. Now let's check out Beautiful Mike Budnick in this next match. Kid Diamond. Kid Diamond's really popular with the fans, you know, he's got that quick offensive style. He's all over the place all the time. Uh, the fans really get behind Kid Diamond when he's in the ring. He's exciting, he's entertaining, and everyone loves a good old-fashioned shooting star press. And uh, Kid Diamond pulls off a nice one, and there he is showing off some of his athleticism. You gotta love how when he flips up like that, his hood of his jacket flips up onto his head. That's, uh, it's talent right there. Beautiful, 
And here he comes now, beautiful Mike Budnick with uh, manager Chaz Brax. Chaz Brax has that mirror as usual. And the very cocky and confident Budnick, you know, always strutting as he walks. You know, he makes sure that people look at, he's making sure people look at him. And that's what he wants. He wants people to look at. You know, he's always checking, looking for mirrors. And that appears he found one. Taking the time to check himself out in the mirror. As, uh, as Mike Budnick is prone to do. This should be an interesting match. A kind of clash of styles. Mike Budnick can move in the ring a little bit. You know, he does not move as good or as quick as Kid Diamond. Kid Diamond will do flips, and like I mentioned, that shooting star press, and you saw him flip up when he got into the ring. Now, Budnick will move in the ring. You know, he's pretty quick, can move around, but uh, Kid Diamond definitely has the speed and aerial advantage over Mike Budnick. Mike Budnick's got some um, surprisingly hard-hitting maneuvers for someone his size. You know, he's only 160 pounds, but he's got some some strong clotheslines in there, and that extreme makeover can come out of nowhere, that double knee, double knee to the face. So here we are, both competitors getting in the ring, and Budnick forcing the referee to hold the rope up for him, making sure he holds it high enough so that he can get in the ring. And then, apparently the referee was not holding the rope high enough for Budnick. You can hear Chaz Brax, always loud, always brash is Chaz Brax, making sure everyone can hear him, making sure his man can hear him. The referee doing a good job here, checking for weapons. And our match is underway. Like I said, this should be a quick, nice, fast-paced match. You got two too quick, too impressive competitors in the ring at once. So you always go up that and <laughs> But Nick does not, he looks like he's not ready for this match yet. Tom Kid Diamond, hang on. Hang on a second. Let me, uh, let me stretch. Something he probably should have done before the match. You know, that, that's just me. I would have stretched before the match. And again, making sure he does not want any of Kid Diamond in this match right now. And there he goes again, stretching. Now it's hard to tell if Budnick is stretching for his own well-being, or if he's merely doing it to show off. And uh, Kid Diamond not having any of that anymore, kicking Budnick right in the butt out of the ring. And that did not make Budnick happy, but Budnick rushes in, and uh, it's a face plant for his efforts there. And there's that athleticism I was talking about, Kid Diamond. You now a beautiful standing backflip splash onto Mike Budnick. And Mike Budnick needs to not get, you know, his head off full of steam like he did there. He paid for it. He got kicked in the butt, embarrassed a little bit by Kid Diamond, and then um, ran out of the ring and got taken down. And what's Kid Diamond doing here? Maybe a hurricane run or something? Nope, Kid Diamond just showing off with those flips and whatnot. And a beautiful drop kick there by Kid Diamond. And you gotta wonder if Budnick did not, you know, went into this a little lightly. You know, he's he he has a size advantage over Kid Diamond. He's the first Cyberstar champion. He was almost involved in the Cyberstar Championship match tonight. Uh, and, and Budnick is very cocky. I can't imagine that he went into this taking. Kid Diamond as serious as he should be. Nice uh, hot shot there on the top rope, hanging up Kid Diamond. Referee in good position there, and a, uh, a late kick out. You know, they're getting pulled down to those ropes. Those ropes are pulled tight across there, so you don't flip out into the ring. Lots of tension there, and getting slapped on him is not good. And a nice, you see how Budnick snaps his hips, but then lifts slow and just pulls Kid Diamond over. You know, he did it in a, a cocky pin here. But you look at that suplex and you see just the, the torque and the slowness of it. That really rattles when compared to normal suplexes. Normal suplexes, you either hold them up for an extended period of time or a quick snap. But uh, Bunnick does a very interesting version of that suplex there where he torques you over real slow and drops you hard. Bunnick getting in the ref's face here. Not a good move and uh, 
well, he paid for it. He could dine with a quick schoolboy there and uh, almost caught my Budnick there. That would have been, for sure, would have been considered an upset. Uh, Budnick with some recent head and a, a winning knee move, a vintage Mike Budnick right there. And I've seen him do that every time he's fought. That running knee, it's a great move, uh, running knee buster. Two count there. You can hear Chaz Brass getting in with the ref, and Budnick wants another count. No, that's one of his signature moves, that running knee. I'm sure in the past he's put someone away with it, and he wonders why Kadam was able to kick out. Yeah. Uh, Chaz Brax getting involved now. This this is uncalled for. Mike Budnick's distracting the referee, and Chaz Brax getting involved, choking Kid Diamond on those thick ropes, and the ref had no idea about it. At least he's not breaking mirrors over people's heads. Was uh, John Campbell after collision course used Chaz Brax's pink mirror, broke it over June Vado. Chaz Brax has a different mirror now. Kedayan coming back into it with some nice punches here. Back in first. And here trying to pick up the pace again. But a, whoa, and that was a devastating clothesline by Mike Budnick. Just flipped Kid Diamond completely in half. Uh, full back from there. I am, would not be surprised if this is the end. But Kid Diamond able to kick out at two. And, uh, I think Budnick's even a little surprised there. And oh, what's this? There's this athleticism I mentioned before of Kid Diamond. He's got him in a, uh, a modified head scissor toss there. And Budnick came down hard on the top of his head. He's going to be really dazed from that. A little dizzy from being spun. And then slammed down hard on the top of his head there. And the referee has started the 10 count. Both men cannot get to their feet by a 10 count. It is a, uh, a double knockout. But I'm not too worried about that. Kid Diamond's already up to two. Taking Bundick into the corner, delivering some punches and uh, some shoulder thrusts here. Look at how he lifts his entire body off the ground. And a fantastic backflip into a running shoulder thrust. And Kid Diamond uses his entire body with those shoulder thrusts. He's not that big, like I've mentioned, so he's got to use his entire body there. And uh, just a two count there. Close to, you have to imagine that uh, Bundick kicked out of instinct there. You know, but Nick is still a newcomer, like he's only debuted in 2012, so he still, you know, does not have the ring presence that some veteran competitors would have. So he, he's getting the instincts in there, and kicking out like that is a good way to do it. But you see there's a lot of cockiness there, and uh, Chaz Brax trying to shake Kid Diamond off the top rope, and Kid Diamond calls for that shooting star press, and of course, Chaz Brax to the ground can't say he didn't deserve that. Laying on the ground, and uh, Kid Diamond on the top rope, taking time, He's, uh, he's touching the ceiling. Kidan does not have that much height to pull up this move. He's got to go low, and, and that paid for it. Chaz Brax helped Kid Diamond, or helped Mike Budnick by distracting Kid Diamond. And it looks like Budnick's setting up for the end here. And there's that jumping double knees to the face, the extreme makeover. And you can count to like four and a half if you want to. Uh, Kid Diamond is not getting up from that. Strong back and forth match there. Uh, good move by both. Chess Brax was able to help his man out. And that's what he's for. You know, he's there to help Mike Budnick. He's there to help him get better, help him rack up wins, help him get back in that Cyber Star, maybe even IROG Championship uh, contendership. So, I well, we hope you enjoyed this match. There'll be more action coming at you soon on Squared Circle TV. Enjoy the rest of the show. like that that make me want to watch more professional wrestling. But unfortunately, we're out of time for today. So I would like to offer my congratulations to beautiful Mike Budnick and manager Chaz Brax on a successful win over Kid Diamond at the Cinco de Mayhem event. I would like to inform you of our next event. That's right, 
International Ring of Grapplers will be at Rockapalooza, and we will be there for three days. The first day is Friday, June 21st, 2013, and that is a free day for Rockapalooza. You can get in, see all the stuff, check out some International Ring of Grapplers awesomeness. Saturday, the day after, comes after Friday, is an all-day cage match. Cage matches all over the place. There'll be people climbing cages, falling off cages, getting hit into cages. Cages will be set up, cages will be taken down, cage doors will be open, cage doors will be shut. Lots of cages. If you're good at climbing fences, you want to go watch that and learn how to climb a fence. Uh, that was a little ridiculous, I know, but it happened. It happened. The third day, International Ring of Grapplers will attempt to break a world record by having the most men in a battle royal of all time. Who knows? Maybe I even I'll get in the ring. But I might. You never know. All right. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com backslash the IROG. Check us out on the YouTube, youtube.com backslash the IROG too. Follow us on Twitter, at the IROG. Follow me on Twitter, at RealJScavone. And use the hashtag SCTV to let people know what you're watching, what you're talking about. And if you want to talk about me, or talk to me, either or, I like being talked about, and I like being talked to. For everyone here, at International Ring Grapplers, Squared Circle Television, I bid you a very humble and grateful adieu.